So in our DME class, we were discussing about levers and today we will discuss the last type of the levers that is bell crank lever. In a bell crank lever, the two arms of the lever are at right angles. So you can see in this diagram, this is the diagram for the bell crank lever. The, in this lever, the two arms are at right angle. Such type of levers are used in railway signaling governors of Hartnell type, the drive for air pump of condensers, etc. The bell crank lever is designed in a similar way as discussed earlier. The arms of the lever may be assumed of rectangular, elliptical, or I section. So the design will be similar as we have discussed, but uh, we will discuss its design with the help of a question. Design a, a right angle bell crank lever the horizontal arm is 500 mm long and load of 4.5 kN acts vertically downward through a pin in the forked end of this arm so the horizontal arm have a length of 500 and load act is 4.5 kN so you can see this horizontal arm is of length 500 and load acting on this is 4.5 kN Fb is equal to 500 and W is equal to 4.5 kN. At, uh, at the end of uh, the 150 mm long arm which is perpendicular to 500 mm long arm, a force P acts at right angles to the axis of 150 mm arm through a pin into a fork end. So <coughs> this is another arm which is having a length of 150 and a force is acting at this point P in the left direction. The lever consists of four steel material and a pin at the fulcrum. Take the following data for both the pins and the lever material. Stress in tension, tensile stress is 75, shear stress is 60, bearing pressure is 10. So let's design. We have written the given data, bearing pressure 10, shear stress 60, tensile stress 75, and the rest of the dimensions. First of all, let us find the effort P required to raise the load W, taking moments about the fulcrum F we have. So we have to find this load P. How we will find it? We will find it by applying the formula that is load into distance that is W into 500 is equal to load into distance that is P into 150. After putting the value of W, we will get the P which is 15,000 Newton. After calculating P, we will calculate RF, that is reaction at fulcrum, or we can say force at the fulcrum. At this point, the force is 4.5 kN. At this point, the force is 15,000 Newton. So at F point, the force will be under root of W square plus P square. After putting the value, the answer will be 15,660 Newton. So design for a fulcrum pin. Now let's, uh, this is your fulcrum F and we have to design a pin here. Uh, let's see uh, the diameter of the pin is D, length of the pin is L. So the fulcrum pin will be under crushing or we can say bearing. So the load acting at RF is 15,660 Newton is equal to diameter into length into pressure because uh, force is equal to area into pressure. So we can assume length is equal to 1.25 D empirical relation and put the value of the pressure. From this, you can calculate the diameter of the pin, which is 36 and the length of the pin, which is 45. Now we have to check for shear stress uh, of the pin and the pin is in double shear. So force is equal to area into stress. Force is 15,660. Area is pi by four D square and stress is tau. But since it is in double shear, therefore it is two written here. So put the value of the diameter and calculate the uh, shear stress, which is 7.7, .7, which is less than the given value of 60. Therefore design is safe. So the pin, we have calculated the diameter is 36. The diameter of the pin is 36. This pin is surrounded by a bush, brass bush, we can say of three mm thickness. So the total thickness of 36 plus six become 42. The 42 will be the hole in the liver. 
and the hub length will be double of 36 that is 72 so the hub diameter will be 72 so diameter of the hole in the liver is 42 and diameter of the boss of the fulcrum is 72 now design for fil uh, pin at a so we have designed the fulcrum pin now for the pin a <clears throat> now you, you can see at fulcrum the load is 15660 newton and a the load is 15000 newton so there is not much difference between the load acting at these pins so we can use the same pin at point a so since the effort at a is 15000 which is not very much different from the reaction at fulcrum which is 15660 newton Therefore, same dimensions for the pin and boss may be used for the fulcrum pin to reduce the spares. So same dimensions will be taken for the pin at A. Now design for pin at B. Now at this point, the pin at B, we have to design it. Assume D1 be the diameter of the pin. At B, L1 is the length of the pin. So load is equal to area into pressure. Area is D1 into L1, pressure is PB. Put the values of L1 is equal to 1.25 D1, assuming, and we have calculated the value of diameter that is 20, and the length calculated will be 25. Now we have to check it again for the shear stress. Force is equal to area into stress since uh, it is in double shear, therefore 2 is written here. Put the value of the diameter and calculate the shear stress, which is 7.16 megapascal, which is less than the given value. Therefore, design of the pin net B is safe. Now design for the liver. The liver is designed for bending. Since bending stress is given as M by Z, bending moment by section modulus, bending stress is equal to tensile stress, which is uh, 75 given to us. Bending moment, we have to calculate Z is section modulus, which is one by six T B square. So put the value of one by six T thickness, we have to calculate B, we assume three T. So Z is equal to 1.5 T cube, we have put here. Now the left thing is M, M is equal to bending moment, which is force into distance. So <clears throat> let, we can say we have to calculate uh, the bending moment at section Y, this section, which is 50 mm away from F. So you can take uh, T is equal to thickness of the liver at Y, B is equal to width or depth of the liver <coughs> at Y, taking distance from the center of the fulcrum to y by as 50 therefore maximum bending moment will be force is acting 45000 4500 uh, which is acting at b and the length will be 5 500 minus 50 that is 450 so we have calculated bending moment and uh, put the value of bending moment z and bending stress we have calculated the thickness of the liver at y by and multiply it by 3 we can calculate the width of the liver at yy so in this way we can design the liver so this completes the design of bell crank liver this liver is very important and this question is very important from the subject point of view okay guys thank you